Oh, okay guys, so continuing on the next day here. Um, just did the fuel pump last night, as you guys saw. And now we're gonna change the injectors. So again, we're going to Bosch or Bosch or Bosch or whatever. Um, yeah, 630cc, which is more than plenty for what I need, um, but I can have them adjusted for my application. And then as always guys, just make sure you got the battery disconnected just to be safe with everything. Um, I gotta go grab my fire extinguisher again, make sure that's safety too. Um, you're gonna want like a lot of rags, just stuff that's gonna help you prevent any sort of spillage. The last thing you need is some um, fuel dripping down into places you don't need, especially in the hot engine bay. So um, but yeah, so what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna open up the gas cap again, just to get any sort of um, air out of the system. Should be okay, considering I haven't ran anything since, uh, since we did the pump last night but um yeah i'm gonna do that and then we're gonna come back over here have everything set up and we'll get going so we got the fire extinguisher ready to rock here some paper towels stuff like that a couple um yeah rags so got absorb all handy too but i'm really not expecting too much fuel to come out of these things but anyways guys let's just do a quick overview on what we're gonna do here today um again so we have our four main injectors here that's all you're gonna have on this uh, little four cylinder of ours. And then you can see they're attached to the fuel rail. Um, we got our fuel pressure regulator sitting over here too with our boost line teed into it. And then you guys remember that this line runs into the manifold here as part as the evap delete. So um, yeah, what we're gonna pretty much do is we're gonna unhook the four injecting har or the four injector harnesses right now. So pretty easy guys, it's just, um, a metal tab here so you just press that it pops right out there you go there's already two of them gone the good thing about this little kind of bracket is that they're already separated so you can't mix them up and you can toss them on the side do the same thing on this one so there we go we got the four the four injector harnesses out here um, this one, I'm probably gonna add some tape to it. I don't know why that one doesn't have it, but that's okay, I can add some in. And then if you guys take a look, you see how there's like kind of these black tabs that's attached to the fuel rail. Um, you should be able to pop them off. So just something like that. It's kind of hard again with the one hand here. But once you kind of pop it off of there, it'll allow you to get better access to our fuel rail because there are some Allen bolts, you guys can see there's one down there, and then there's one right there too. Those are five millimeter, I think, Allen bolts that have to come off. That is pretty much is what holding your fuel rail into place. So now that I got this little tiny kind of harness thing out of the way here, you can see it's nice and loose. Obviously it's tied in to the rest of the car, so it's not gonna go too far. But again, you just wanna make sure that it's not attached to the fuel rail gives you a little bit more leeway um, we're gonna disconnect our fuel pressure regulator so I got the zip tie kicking on here right now uh, seems to be doing a decent job but uh, yeah I'm gonna cut it just be careful guys you don't nick your boost line here or your um, um, evap line I guess you can say but if you do um, I left myself enough slack that I can still fix it and then we're gonna do these two clips from our fuel supply so look at the supply I think right here in the blue and at the bottom is the return. So make sure you guys take that off, just be careful, because then you don't want to get any leakage. So I'm just gonna work, guys, on getting these two lines off first. Again, you'll see the extra one coming in. That one is from the coolant, um, from the coolant ball. So you kind of see how this one down there, those two down there uh, run for that. And then obviously the other one's plugged from when we did our um, SAI EVAP um, N29, or whatever it was again. I forgot it was. We did that whole delete. But yeah, so I'm gonna try to take off these two lines. Number one and number two, the two fuel lines. Um, I will see how it goes. I'm not sure how hard they're gonna be on there. Worst comes with worst. I'll make my way over here and I will be popping them off of this, very similar to the top of the fuel pump. You're gonna press in like so, and then you'll be able to pull it off. So just be careful. So again here guys, you guys can see, see the tab? 
move in. Just, like I said, be very careful with these ports because they are plastic. Um, I'm going to try to do this with the camera. It might be a little hard. Oops, I see that. Ooh, okay, that's not a bad view. And again, I have some rags ready just in case because it might get... There might be some spare fuel kicking around in these lines. I'll try to pry it off. So there's one. Oh, nice, no fuel in it, which is good. And then we'll work on this guy here. And again, these guys are color coded. So you can see the blue and there's blue down there. That way you should know where they're gonna go when you put everything back. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> so that one had someone or had some in there. Oh, I got a cut on my hand. I should have kept the gloves on. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, we're okay. Part of the car, right? Part of the car. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot easier, I guess, than taking this off because this line is so old. But I think in the future anyways, I'm going to um, take those off and repair them or put, sorry, um, put some new lines on. But then you have these little kind of connectors here. So make sure you guys disconnect the lines. That way you don't take this one with it, the, the coolant one. So I'm just going to pull these back. Okay, so now that we have the fuel lines off right here, again, well, it's not much fuel in it, which is nice. I'm just going to keep some stuff there. Um, yeah, we're going to work on getting the fuel pressure regulator off right here. So I'm just going to grab some pliers, snip my little... Uh, zip tie there and then take it off obviously that will allow us to remove the fuel rail after we do these little allen bolts okay so there we go fuel pressure regulator is good to go and our main fuel lines coming to our fuel rail are also off now we're ready to get the five mil i think it's a five mil looks like a five mil allen bolt um, so yeah, I'm gonna grab that with the extension that will loosen up the bar um, This would be a very good Opportunity to you guys to make sure you guys take a picture of the injectors before you take take sorry take the whole Fuel rail off that way when you put the new ones on you have a very good idea of the orientation At which your injectors are supposed to sit whether they're facing towards the engine block or towards the manifold or wherever you guys have a good idea especially for the connections Again there guys, you can see, so we see I have the black kind of main harness with the injector harnesses coming off of it, completely off the fuel rail now. And again, five millimeter Allen. There we go, just broke free there. And then I'm gonna just grab the second one. Great. There we go. Make sure you guys also don't lose these bolts. As always, um, I'm trying to tilt the camera for you guys, but I only have like a little <laughs> tiny uh, mount on it and it seems to fall everywhere. So I'm just going to kind of work on this for you guys. Yeah. So there you go. These two are loose. This one's pretty much out. So now we can slowly remove the fuel rail. Um, yeah, you're gonna pull it up. Everything's in there by like kind of friction. So because this is so old, it might be in there pretty good. Just uh, be careful guys as you're doing it. And again, remember you got your fuel lines over here. So just be careful you don't spill anything. But uh, yeah, let's see how this goes here. Okay, so here goes nothing. You guys can see here too, like, look at all the crap coming out of there. Like, I don't know if I have a leaky injector or anything, but um, yeah, that's a little bit worrisome for sure. Definitely going to put some brake clean, clean that all around. Make sure you guys have rags also kicking around because you're going to want to plug these holes so that no crap gets into your uh, manifold and um, yeah, fires into the cylinders and stuff. So just be careful. Okay, so I've already popped off this side right here. That side's already been popped off. Now I'm just going to work on getting this side out. So just a little bit of force. There we go. Nice guys. As you guys can see now, 
I got the fuel rail all nice and loose. Um, a little bit of a cluster over here with the wiring and these lines, so I'm just gonna kinda work everything around and then once I get the actual rail all the way out, I'll be able to show you guys how we're gonna take the injectors off. Okay, so you can see our holes here. I gotta get some stuff in there, pronto. Definitely have to get some rags and stuff in there. And then um, if you guys can take these two lines off, it makes a big difference because as you guys can see, this harness kind of straddles in between them. So what I have to do now is kind of have to pull the harness kind of towards like the intake and then kind of filter around the return line here and the supply line to go around this harness, which kind of makes it a bit of a pain. So we'll see how that goes. But um, just judging it right now, it looks like a bit of a, a pain. So we'll see. Alrighty. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's just too much of a pain trying to get this thing around. There's like a little bracket that attaches the two fuel rails together. And, um, yeah, I don't feel like taking off all the sensors over here because I don't want to run the risk of, uh, of breaking the sensor or cracking anything. So what I'm going to do is just have the fuel rail kind of sitting like this and change them this way. But again, guys, you guys can see we have these little tiny clips right here. See this little square clip? Similar to the ones that we did on the brake lines. You're going to pull those out and then that will allow you to pull the injector down. But you can see like how gunky and crappy um, these old ones are. But anyways, um, at the same time here, I'm gonna have some brake clean kicking around and I'm just gonna kind of clean around the ports. Again, try not to get any dirt and stuff in there. You can see I got everything kind of covered up. But um, yeah, it's not that the, it's hard, sorry. It's not that it's a hard job to do. It's just kind of like, I don't know, technical and you got to be kind of careful with everything and again this is my first time ever doing one injectors and two um doing this on a volkswagen so as we're going along here we're learning which is pretty big and again just make sure you cover that up in case you get any sort of uh um gasoline leaking down and whatnot and i really want to change the lines so that might be something in the future but we won't worry about that right now okay so these are all clean now Again, uh, do the best I can without getting a bunch of gunk and crap inside the actual um, ports here. But you guys can see now, again, you, I can kind of pry this one up just a little bit. And what I think I might do is, um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do one injector at a time here, or if I'm gonna just take them all off and do one by one, putting everything back on. But um, yeah, definitely take your time, guys. Again, prying these things off. It's kind of hard to show with the camera, but uh, let's see if I can get it up there for you. So hopefully you guys can see this, but pretty much have the fuel rail sitting up here and then take my screwdriver and stick it in the back here and then pulls. You guys can see that, right? I think so. There you go. So yeah, pulls off this little clip. I'm gonna put this in a safe place. You're gonna need it, obviously. And again, try to remember the way that these clips go on. And it looks like, um, yeah, they're pretty easy to do. And then, yeah, now that we have one, I'll just show you guys how to do it from here. Right there, so we got this one off. We should be able to wiggle this injector out. So right now I'm actually just pushing it with the one hand. Might have to use two here, but they should pop out. Oh, there we go. And as you guys can see, there's still some fuel, fuel in there. So um, what I probably should have done, that might have been a little bit better. Um, I probably should have tried to start the car maybe without the fuel fuse in there. That way, um, I mean, I get rid of all the fuel that's inside the rail. So one, that allevi alleviates sorry, pressure. And it also makes it a lot easier to take everything off. And you don't get such a mess. But um, yeah, lesson learned on that one. Um, I was kind of worried about like vapor lock and everything, but yeah, you guys can see this, uh, the old injector here. And again, remember guys, take note of how the actual, um, connection here, where it's facing. So when you put the new ones in, you have everything kind of the same orientation. So I'm just going to work on getting these last ones out before I put everything in. Um, yeah, I pretty much have an idea how everything's going to sit. As far as putting the new ones in, connection is going to be facing the actual uh, return line and inside 
towards the valve cover and the block itself. But we're grabbing our, uh, where'd you go? Ah, right here. Flathead screwdriver. And again, just gonna kind of pry from the back here. There we go. Nice and easy. Perfect. Again, safe place. Twist this up. There might be some fuel. There we go, just a little bit. Not too much. There we go. Number two done. Um, yeah, just gonna work on getting these last two out. And then I'll show you guys what we're gonna do when we put our new ones in. All right, so there we go. Get all the injectors out now. Again, all our ports are plugged and then I just have a bunch of rags over there just in case any fluid, or in this case, obviously gasoline, spills everywhere. But uh, I don't think there's anything left in this rail. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna kinda take a look at everything here. Make sure everything's all nice and sealed up. Everything looks okay. We're gonna grab the new injectors now and take a look at those and then we're gonna reinstall. So we're good to go here now um, to put the new ones in. Make sure you guys remove the old O-rings that are in there. So when I took these things off, there was O-rings that were sitting in there. Um, I just grabbed one of the new injectors to make sure and there is a bigger O-ring on top. So that will go in. And then um, just judging by the orientation of this, we already know which way they're gonna sit. So yeah, anyways guys, I showed you guys this obviously earlier in the video, 6.30. Uh, CC injectors from Bosch which um, yeah should be more than enough like I said a hundred times but anyways again make sure you guys have the adapters so you guys can see the difference between this adapter right here I don't know the actual names I think this is like an EV or something like that EV something but yeah you can see the difference between this style of the connection and this style so make sure when you guys get your new injectors they have that style if not you have to do what I did here which is common you just get the adapters there's two in here and then the other two are in the main bag but uh yeah anyways we're going to start installing these um went out got a can of lithium grease that I, what i'm going to do is i'm just going to kind of spray on my hand and you're going to want to apply a small amount of it on just the o-rings on both sides so on the top here and then on the bottom we'll put them in there right before we put it into um the intake ports so i'm going to get going on that and then uh, slowly but surely we'll be able to get this rail back in so just enough around the o-ring here just so everything sits in there nice as you guys can see and then my hand is just covered in this stuff so um, I'm gonna put that on the side for, for now. Worry about it later on. And then we'll begin putting our first one in here. So I just remember that the return line is where the connection, the connection point here was sitting. So we should be able to just push it in there. I think it's gonna, you'll hear it kind of like clip in. Um, if not, just push it enough that you can put your clip back on to hold it in place. right in there nice and then our clip right here again you can kind of see um, I'll show you guys on the next adapter actually or on the next uh, injector but you'll see what I mean on how it all fits into place okay so there's the first one done and again, I'm gonna wait till I have all four of them on there before I take the bottom parts off, put lithium grease on all those, and then put it back into the port, and then put our adapters. But um, let me see if I can show you guys how the clip kind of works. So let me grab a brand new one here and I'll show you. So once you take off this little cap, again, be careful you don't take the O-ring with it. There we go. You can kind of see, hopefully you guys can see it, there's a little kind of crevice 
kind of like a slit right here. So when you put on your new, or not your new, but when you put on your tab, you kind of see how on this side of it, there's kind of like a, a bit of a bracket on it compared to this side where there's nothing. This right here, this flat piece right here will slide into that um, little kind of crevice in there, locking it into place. It's kind of hard to explain on camera. Um, hopefully it's focusing enough for you guys to see it. When you guys do it, you guys will have no problem. You, you'll see exactly what I mean, but just kind of like a little tip as we're going. Let's see if I can show you guys. So right there, you'll see how it kind of has its own little guideway to get in there. It's kind of hard with the... Okay, there we go. So I just have to adjust it around, but you guys get the picture. And then as you guys are going here, just make sure that your orientation, everything's facing the right way. Just got two more to go and we'll be ready to put it into the ports. So we're just putting the last one on here now, finally. There we go. And our little clip. guys there we go all four brand new 630 cc injectors um yeah so now we're getting ready to put them back into the ports here so again lithium grease uh just kind of put them palm my hand for now i'm slowly gonna do that just kind of coat you can kind of see the green so those are the ones that we're going to be coating up and then we'll be able to place them into the hole um, putting some decent pressure on but nothing too crazy you don't want to break anything and then we can get everything ready to get our allen bolts back on as well and our fuel lines but uh, so far guys pretty good no issues at the moment um, this was one thing I was actually pretty nervous about doing uh, by myself just because I've never done injectors before but I've told myself if I can do the brakes on this car and everything seems to work okay I should be able to tackle this. Not to mention I saved like 200 and something dollars uh, from the tuner, um, just doing them on myself. So we'll see, but again, let's start doing the lithium grease on the bottom part here, and then we can get back into our holes. It might be easier to guys to put our adapters on now while we have the rail up in the air like this. So um, you know what, I might as well just do it to show you guys, but again, there's the adapters right here. So you can see, there's our connection from the Mark IV um, harness right there. And then this one is for the Bosch for the 630. So just gonna clip it on. It only goes in one way, so just like that. I'll try to do this, um, I mean, I'll try to do this actually without the camera being here, it's just kinda hard. There we go, there's one, one done right there. I'm just gonna do the other three, and then yeah, sorry, I'll continue on with doing this right after. I figured it'd be a good opportunity just to show you guys this now. So a lot of people ask me um, what, what radio or what tunes I put on when I'm working on cars here. Um, so this is Q107, which is like out of Hamilton, I think. Um, don't get me wrong guys, I, I like classic, uh, I shouldn't say classic, but I like like good old rock tunes and stuff like that, but this is the only station that works um, on my uh, kind of radio thing that's in my garage, or at least has clear reception, so <laughs> I'm not trying to like um, promote them or do anything crazy like that, but uh, I just figured I'll let you guys know. And like you can't work on a car without having some good tunes and hanging out, you know? I find that's this whole beauty about doing this stuff, but uh, okay, guys, there we go. All four have the, the adapters on and they have our lithium grease, so let's start getting everything back into the ports. Let's make sure that we don't get any dirt and crap in here again because we're going to be pulling our kind of hole cover here. Fuel rail back down to where it's supposed to go. There we go. Good 
kind of a pain to do by yourself, but it's all right. There we go, guys. And then if you guys take a look, um, so the coolant, the coolant uh, line here for the overflow, when it goes down to those two hard lines there, there's like a bracket on there as well. So they both kind of go underneath, um, or it goes underneath the fuel rail, and then your five mil Allen will kind of put them together so that they're mounted together. So just make sure that you have that lined up as well. Okay, um, yeah, should have everything in there. Just gotta get my five mils here and my, um, yeah, five millimeter Allen alumda uh, socket there and I should be able to put everything in here uh, I think when I tighten everything up it should seal everything which is the big thing here obviously you don't want to have any leaks so let's give that a go so as we're just tightening this thing down with our allen bolt here again make sure everything is seated the best you can get it and as you tighten this down it should put everything like I said into place um, again, you don't want to put too much pressure. Um, I don't think there's like a popping noise or anything that's supposed to happen, but we'll find out the hard way. That's why we have fire extinguisher. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't want to break or push too much pressure on these new injectors and snap anything. And uh, I don't think there's anything uh, down there that they can go further into their little um, plug there. So just tighten everything up. And I'm going to do it tighten the one side and then work on the other side tighten that down and go back and forth until what, there's even pressure all the way around so it's nice and tight there I don't know if you guys can hear that fly is driving me nuts And one more just to make sure, um, as you guys know, <laughs> don't go too tight, but it's enough to make sure that everything is seating properly. And that's on there good. Perfect. Okay, guys, there we go. So there's the injectors they're doing right now rail feels nice and tight and uh yeah so we're gonna start putting everything back on here um fuel pressure fuel pressure regulator and our harness i'll do the harness first and then we'll move over to our fuel lines as well and then we'll be able to at least prime the pump which is a huge thing doing this and then we'll see if everything works rails on nice and tight you should just go right in Perfect, guys. And on this side as well. Hopefully you guys can see that. Oops, that's a bit too much, but... And click and click. There we go. Nice. And check this side one more time. Boom. Awesome guys. Hope it doesn't rain here. It looks like it might shortly, but at least I got these holes all covered up. And again, fuel rail is nice and tight. Everything looks like it's in good shape at the moment. Crappy fuel injectors are out. We got the corona going today. But uh yeah, so we'll plug this guy in right now too as well. And I'll have to go and grab another little zip tie for him. And then yeah, then we just gotta put our fuel lines on. Like we never did anything guys look at that everything back to normal please guys please please work should all work pretty good again uh just want to make sure this is nice and tight i'm one of these guys that just i just always like double triple check everything just because i get a little nervous but everything looks like it's in there and it's nice and tight so it should be okay um but yeah so the zip tie um i guess see if i can try to find some small small tiny tiny like silicone kind of things for that but I think the zip tie should be okay nice and tight but now we can put our fuel lines back on so again you're gonna feed it underneath the coolant line so this goes underneath right here for both of them 
And then we have these little pieces here that are gonna connect all three of the, the two fuel lines and this little coolant line together. And again, guys, I would maybe change this if you guys have the chance. They're just a little weathered out on mine for sure. And now that we're ready to go here, I'm just gonna take these old rags out, make sure all the fuel's dried up. But um, yeah, so again, guys, our return line is the blue, which goes on the blue one. Should just clip in, just like the fuel pump. Perfect. So that's in there, and then our supply line, a little bit of leakage, but nothing too crazy. Perfect. So that's all clipped in, and then we'll do our little um, organizer thing here. You guys can see where they where they go. Again, putting the coolant line on, or water line, whatever, it's the same thing. Just like that. And one on this side. Oh, there we go guys. So um, yeah, so that's the injectors installed and our fuel pump installed. So what we're gonna do now is um, I'm just gonna let make sure that uh, anything that's in here, any fuel that's fallen in here, make sure it's all dried up or there's none in here at all. And then what I'm gonna do after that, hook up the battery and I'm gonna prime up the fuel pump. So pretty much what I'm gonna be doing, hooking up the battery, turn the ignition key on, make sure that fuel pump primes up before I do any sort of starting. Um, at that point, once we get everything going here, we're gonna make sure that there's no leaks anywhere. Um, doesn't matter how big it is, small or big, just make sure there's zero leaks going on. Make sure everything's running okay. Have your fire extinguisher ready. That's a, that's a big one for sure. And make sure if you have someone to help you that they're aware and they're ready to uh, react to anything if anything were to go wrong. But um, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty excited about it. Okay guys, so we're sitting in the car here now. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's gonna rain. Please don't, not ready for that yet. But um, yeah, so we got the fuel pump installed. We got the new injectors installed. So what we're gonna do now is we gotta prime up that fuel pump. So um, I'm just gonna uh, hook up the battery, which I already did in there. And then I'm going to cycle the ignition a couple times which should um, prime up that fuel pump. That way we have uh, fuel pressure going to our brand new injectors. Uh, once everything is started, um, again guys, this is where it's nice to have an extra pair of spark plugs. I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you don't go and just go drive around on this setup and try to show off that you got new injectors and a new fuel pump because your car is gonna pretty much run like ass and um, you're gonna foul up pretty bad or you might lean out. Your, your computer's not gonna really know what to do with those injectors or if it does, it's gonna try to compensate in other places. So I would highly suggest obviously that you do this. Um, you know I mean? I'm gonna be trailering the car to dominate. So I just wanna be able to move it. And then I have the brand new spark plugs, the colder plugs to, to go on, which will then um, you know, I mean, give me a fresh setup when, when it's on the dyno. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna give this thing a couple cycles just to get some fuel pressure. And then once it starts, head out there, make sure I got my fire extinguisher handy just in case, be prepared to take off the battery, all that stuff. And um, yeah, we'll check for leaks and all that stuff, which hopefully, which should be okay. But yeah, let's see how it goes. So yeah, we're just gonna cycle the ignition a couple times. So you guys can hear that pump. Okay, so, so far, I think it internal in there, that might be because it's ready to go. So let's give it a start and see what happens. So there we go, guys. Uh, I'm just gonna get out, check for leaks. You guys can hear how bad it sounds because it is running some heavy, heavy, uh, rich content you can even see on the air fuel here but uh yeah i'm gonna get out there take a look make sure there's no leaks going on other than that we should be okay so the cold start is finally done um you can see now we're sitting at 14.8 currently six five four dropping all over the place but uh yeah so the ecu has done what it has to do in order to get our perfect ratio here which is uh totally expected that's usually what cars tend to do, especially when you're running pretty rich. 
but um, you guys heard it how lumpy it was and uh, now that it's kind of smoothed out I'm just kind of letting everything idle up here but again guys make sure that you get your car safely to your tuner I wouldn't be driving around trying to show off your new injectors and all that stuff because it's not going to mean anything you're going to run the risk of damaging your engine or just fouling everything up so just make sure you guys when you do all this stuff that you you either tow it or trailer it or um yeah find a way to get it to your tuner safely and um yeah hopefully this thing goes well i th i think it will i'm really excited about it just got to put some uh fuel in it so some 94 fuel like i said earlier higher octane helps gives your tuner a lot of flexibility got to gather up some spare parts uh coil packs n75 maybe a spare diverter valve just anything that it's gonna help my tuner with 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 doing the the tune that we're gonna do on the car makes a makes a big difference and I'm sure it gets uh, some respect so um, yeah 630 CC injectors guys in the front by Bosch Dieschwerks Deutschwerks whatever DW um, I think it was 265 again for the pump and then we have our brand new spark plugs that will be going in at the actual um, dyno session if we need them. Those are your, your main things for sure for getting your tune done. So make sure you have all that ready to go. And then just enjoy it, guys. Enjoy the process of uh, getting your car tuned. Have fun with it. Or the not, it's starting to rain, so I gotta cover the thing up here. But uh, yeah, appreciate, really, really appreciate you guys watching that video. If you have any questions, guys, feel free to DM me, Max Tech Motorsports, either on YouTube here, or you can follow me on Instagram as well. Um, I'm usually pretty good at answering messages, so uh, feel free to DM me. And uh, yeah, other than that, subscribe, comment as always, take care, be safe, and hopefully we'll get the dyno session with this. So see you guys, enjoy.